Hey guys, and welcome to the season finale of Dodo He Dodo. Now, with the way last week's episode ended, I feel like this is going to have a lot of feels as the show itself is going to break up with us, as well as we're going to experience a bit of a breakup scene with Nikaido and Kaima. With it being the final episode as well, I think they're going to reveal a lot of stuff at the same time, not reveal everything so they can kind of hype us up, as there are still a lot of mysteries to be unraveled. So, as sad as I am that this is going to be the last episode, I'm also also really hyped as to what crazy shit they're gonna serve us this episode. So without further ado, let us get into things. If you guys wanna watch along, I'll be starting the video in 3, 2, 1, let's go. Memories of school days. Oh, we're gonna get some back. Oh, are we covers a lot more of a little troublesome troublemaker than I thought? I love how we have a school. <laughs> It's for the boss. Whose head is that? Ooh, knife again. Very similar fighting skills to Kaima, I would say. Ooh, but the knife is a little bit different there. What's inside that bag? I didn't expect this to have a school. in the bag. Okay, so so the boss is definitely coming up a way for them to produce smoke, I feel. Why do I feel like Awikawa has a very different personality? Oh shit, I didn't expect this to kind of start here. I'm sorry, I was really quiet because like, I feel like this episode, as I mentioned, is going to reveal a lot. At the same time, not reveal a lot. Be rude. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So this was, okay, so this was Rizu kind of in the present, obviously the school scene um was in the past but so Reza kind of went back to that place he was talking about that had the factory from the main kind of cross-eyed guild so he can find the boss and obviously find out who murdered him Awikawa okay something that's really weird is that I didn't expect that to be kind of Awikawa's personality um and what I mean by that is when we first saw him the first time we saw him was in I think roughly episode eight or nine um when we got that kind of flashback from Rizu about how he went to, um with that suitcase how we got that kind of mission from the guild um and Awikawa was sitting there and the voice it was really like just quiet just like oh like no worry it, like it sounded a lot more very shy um so that's why i was really kind of surprised when i saw his personality kind of in this short kind of um past scene where he seemed a lot more like spunky and punky um and how like with the whole like food ceiling there and then very like kind of gruesome um i know the world itself is quite like very uh, gruesome but just like it 
a lot more confident this kind of personality and the biggest thing and then i mentioned about the kind of different personalities happening there not only with the contrast between those kind of past kind of flashbacks but also because he mentioned about the headaches and then just disappeared so boy meets girl battle oh no i'm not ready for this relationship breakup I live for Kaima and waifu and boobs. <gasps> no! Time out. Ooh! The Kaido be flying. Oh, Kaima be flying. I'm worried that Kaima's gonna lose another life here. I'm sorry, I can't stop staring at your titties. <laughs> She's just so hot, but the the outfit itself is still ugly as fuck. Look. Oh, you're stronger with a knife. I wonder why that emphasis on that. Oh, the boobies! The boobies went flying. <laughs> you pop his titties. <laughs> Kama, you must, yeah, you must know that Nakata's under a spell. Under contract. What do you do in this situation? Do you, I, I guess, yeah, I would beat up my best friend to get them back. I would. Please let Nakata die. For fuck's sake. Okay. I still love him. I hate him and I love him. I hated him when um he was beating up Nakaido. But at the same time, I love him. And this devil temple like design itself is very um cool. I like I like how they created the place. Ooh. Oh, maybe Chota. I think that was his name. Will help. How do we, I mentioned this, but like, how do we get Nakaido back? Oh, Kaima, sweetie, you're beating up your boyfriend. Shit, where did Kaima go down to? Oh, oh, another pass? Oh, okay. Oh, it's the same kind of flashback. The phone? Why? What's the emphasis with the phone? And he picked a little kind of devil out of the head. Just play dead. Play dead, Kaima. Play dead. Oh, your legs. Oh, oh, oh. I felt like they were going to go full out with the gruesome this episode. I'll say this. Oh, headache? I know he just fell from the ceiling, but I just feel like... I know, I feel like, I feel like stuff are linking. Going to kill again. A companion, a friend. Oh fuck, Kaima! That's not Kaima. That's I don't think that's Kaima. That's not Kaima. That is not Kaima. <laughs> He's just like hooray! No, I'm begging the Kaida. What do you mean success? <laughs> I guess the praying worked out. <laughs> you 
You can have your pig head there. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, it's a contract! Rip it up! Rip it up! Rip the fuck out! Oh, so he can have the contract. Does it work like that? Or maybe it does. I don't know it worked like that, but I'm happy. I'm so glad we have Asu. No, it wasn't. It was a different head. Who's still in the stop? She just broke up with you, sweetie. Oh my god, and this is how Ed and Chota happen. Is he just gonna eat that? Taking it out should have some effect on N as well. Yeah, would it does it work like that? I guess it kinda of would. Oh no, it doesn't. Unless you and N exchanged in using Ah, oh, that's why it only happens on Blue Knight. Oh, okay, so it's not- I, I thought it was way too simple for it to be cut out. Oh, okay. Oh, it'll just regrow inside your body, so it was only really temporary. Oh, she has to run. So as long as she kind of stays far away. Mm, we could tell by it from the shadow itself, it wasn't Kaima. What the fuck is that? That is there. They cast a spell on your head. No, that's... This is... Oh, shit. Oh, Nakaido. With short hair. That's so cute. And this is how I met your mom. <laughs> I love how he's fussy. Yeah, no, that's pretty bad. You should have named him Gozo. Gozo, sorry, Gozo. Where the hell did Gozo? Scalio. <laughs> Kaima's actually a really cool name. Feels nostalgic for some reason. There's so much going on. There's so much hints going on. Me. 
Why did they do this before? <laughs> Wait, are we still having Korean barbecue together? Okay, I live for this. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> our opponent's filthy rich. I love how no <laughs> shocking. <laughs> I just love how like Noi accepted like they're all bros now as well. No, it wasn't Rizu. We know the magic that. You <laughs> Want me to throw you in hell? You won't get any dinner. Aren't you guys nice? Oh, door. Run, run, run together. Come on, this is not the time. Why did she run away? I love her acting skills. I kind of like M being all like caring, but I know it's not for the right reasons. Oh no, it must be Chota. I always wanted to do something for you. What does that mean? That's why he transformed you. Oh, oh, <laughs> I like that pop pop. <laughs> that was cool. I like how the transformation went as well. So this Chidurab, I have no idea how to pronounce the name, but it seems like... <laughs> so devils are very highly respected. I like that. I like that little bit of devilish plan there. I kind of like that romantic scene there. He didn't disappear. He's still there. Well, he left the door. There was no such man in the first place. It was the same person. Oh, this is getting, this is getting thrilling. Pinky promise. I'm so glad they're back together though.
I wonder what the relationship between us and um, Nikaido is. Because, like, he helped her away before as well when she was trying to gain information and entrance into it. And this kind of place. And he's really going out of his way to help her now as well. Yeah, you two need to talk. Oh, I lost a friend because of my magic. Mm, time time is hard to play with. And obviously you don't want to get used either. What an interesting case. You have the cross-eyed guild that wants to become stronger sorcerers and you have Nakari here that just wants to be human. Oh, I love this piece going on. Oh, <gasps> Kaiba and that blush. This is so cute. <gasps> Pinky promise. Oh, I'm so glad they talked it out. It was such like a simple yet very clarifying talk. Oh, I don't like that promise. Something something scares me about that promise. Just the fact that like no matter who you are, what you are, like Club Big Boss. What is happening? We went from like a smooth, jazzy kind of you're, you're seriously going to end me here with the season finale. That said though, this ending, I fucking love it. To get my face and lost memories back. I'm looking for the guy who cast this magic on me. I love how we went from like the smooth kind of jazz into this. Oh, it's not a new ending. It's more like... Everything's still a mystery in Dora Hu Dora. Oh, I love the fusion happening here. Oh my god, this is I can't help but Oh, who are you guys? You did not just fucking do this to me! <laughs> this is my panic yet anger yet really hyped. Who are, who are those faces? Okay, I feel like this is... Okay, this has to confirm season two. Because you did not just leave me like like this. You did not just leave me like this. Oh. That's what I believe. Oh my god. Oof. Is this it? Oh no, there's more. There's more. Oh. Not the one. Well, Bella, there was a mysterious man in the dark. Kaima got his name from the Kaido. They are friends. What do you mean by they are friends? Okay, that is such a tease. Oh, that Dora Dora gave me chills. Oh my god, there's so much to say about this episode. But firstly, I like how that third curse was just like they are still friends, but in a really disappointed voice. So I feel like even the author themselves or the show itself was kind of like shipping them okay there was so much to this episode and i knew there were going to be a big troll in the sense that they reveal a lot of things but at the same time it doesn't really actually give you all the answers to the mystery but i think that's what i love about it it's like a thriller crime scene in the sense that we the audience can slowly take in the hints however we want and that makes it just so exhilarating so i really wanted to write down my thoughts throughout the whole thing because there were just so many like subtle hints but i'm just going to go through parts and try to explain my thought process and hopefully you guys can follow so firstly 
The whole head hunting thing I think was a big hint from last episode as well and the fact that they were talking about that someone quite powerful was after people's like strong sorcerer's heads and I think that ties in with this new town that was revealed to us of Birith. Uh, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. They mentioned how the cross eyes have a research facility there and I feel like the cross eyes were specifically after sorcerer heads because Reza also mentions here, I'm sure the contents of that bag are going to be used for research there. So I'm thinking that they uh, were maybe collecting sorcerer's heads, like specifically strong sorcerer heads, in order to make themselves stronger. The whole like cross-eyed stronger since they have that research facility there. Now I think that's quite a big hint because Rizu, I feel, also lost his head. Because you know how his head was in his apartment? So I feel like this whole research and cross-eyed makes sense as to Rizu's betrayal because Rizu mentioned that he got betrayed by someone in the cross-eyed kind of guild and that makes sense because I feel like they were after their head. So Rizu definitely had some kind of power that was going to be indeed useful to the whole cross-eyed people. Now the biggest thing I think we got was the whole situation with Kaima. I'm going to 100% say that Arikawa is Kaima because we got here saying that oh I'm getting a headache again I'm leaving and then we had this exact same situation when Kaima was getting the whole beat down from Nikaido. Yes once again and I know that he fell and so the kind of head pain could have come from that but it was more like I feel a personality switch that happens with the headaches because Rizu also mentioned that it's really hard to find Awikawa after he has his headaches like he disappears after those headaches so that gives me a very big confirmation that there are indeed kind of like two split personalities happening there one of Awikawa that is indeed partnered with Rizu and is indeed his friend and then one personality that I feel has absolutely no relation with Rizu and is maybe part of like the head leaders of the cross side guild I know how we mentioned that Awikawa couldn't have possibly killed Rizu because they had that partnership and we have found out that partnerships kind of like Nakoda and En's kind of partnership happening. You can't betray each other. But if we go with the theory that they have split personalities, like Awikawa is indeed like two people, does that not mean that he can technically kill Rizu? Because this mirror scene I think was the biggest hint where Rizu, Kaima was looking in the mirror and it has Rizu in the reflection and he says like, are you going to kill again a companion? Like, are you going to betray a friend again? So that gives me the biggest hint that Awikawa indeed did kill Rizu, but it wasn't Awikawa. Like, yes, the face was Awikawa maybe, but the personality definitely wasn't. Okay, but this is where I get really confused because I threw out another theory of, I think there might be three personalities going on of Kaima, Awikawa, as well as this kind of another person that's the split kind of personality from Awikawa. I'm just gonna call them the knife guy because I feel like he is the knife guy from like kind of last week's episode as well. And why I get this theory is that we got this scene here from 12 minutes and 3 seconds of an operation kind of room. And I think that's Kaima. And I think he had the operation with the whole head thing, which was the cross-eyed kind of mission that we're doing because we see um, when they open the curtains here, they talk about something like all according to plan. We get the sound of kind of a hospital room. We get that same kind of flooring we've seen in the ending as well as in a couple of other flashbacks on. We've previously seen, I believe, and then we see Kaima's kind of uniform here so we know this is Kaima's back and he's saying why am I in such a hurry and it feels like he's running away from something we also get this phone call which I think is the kind of symbolic phone call that's happening here of like you don't come here do you understand that is here and then we get this kind of like slender man vibe going on with the fly noises and so that gives me a really ominous feeling and then they once again confirm something of um uh, that's it in Kaima's voice something evil keeps growing inside of me okay so yeah this is getting really complicated but I feel like Kaima was someone that got experimented on with maybe Rizu's head or just any like kind of sorcerer's head because that was what the research of that kind of facility that was what was going on that cross-eyed facility okay so overall this is what I meant by I feel like they've revealed a lot of stuff but at the same time I still don't know overall exactly to what links up but in conclusion if you didn't follow anything I just said there because I myself didn't my overall theory is that Awikawa killed 
Rizu, but it wasn't Arikawa himself because Arikawa has two split personalities going in with him and I believe the other split personality is the Knife God as well as Kaima, which is the third personality I feel like that kicks in with Arikawa that turns into the Knife Guy, but the Knife Guy is also Kaima because it would make sense because Kaima, when he saw that Mary, he saw Rizu in his reflection and that's because, you know, the whole betrayal thing happening there. However, I feel like this Kaima personality that originated from the Knife personality is another kind of third person that got experimented on during that hospital, during that kind of cross eye facility that was going on where they were kind of tampering with magical kind of heads. So I feel like maybe Kaima was a failed kind of experiment or maybe the whole process created kind of something demonic growing in within Kaima and that was hinted with the whole kind of slender demonic thing that was following around as well as that phone call which has been a constant reoccurring symbolic thing. But we finally had the phone call answered of don't come there. It like that is here. So there is something definitely kind of following or haunting kind of timer's fusion thing that's happening. So yeah, season two, where you at? Because I feel like we've figured out a lot of things, but at the same time, it doesn't explain anything. And I think that shows just the layer and the depth to the writing and the storytelling, because like, it doesn't feel like nothing has been answered. Like we've always been constantly getting clues and answers, but at the same time, it does not solve the overall mystery. And that is just brilliant. So yeah, after talking to myself for nearly like 50 minutes now, trying to explain what the hell is going on, I think it's just the series is awesome. I cannot wait for season two and then goddamn better be a season two or else I'm so binge reading the manga as I need answers. Thank you guys for joining me on this gruesome yet exhilarating and just overall brilliant anime. I'm so glad I decided to check this anime out and I can't thank you guys enough for joining me on this very funky and weird journey. If you guys haven't already do make sure to subscribe so you guys are notified when my next kind of anime shenanigans pops up. Oh and if you have a theory of your own I love reading all the comments so do make sure to let me know in the comments below but until the next mystery make sure you guys say awesome and i'll definitely catch you guys next time